Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Louisa Maya. So my channel is basically all about faith and lifestyle. And I thought what better way to kick off this journey than to show you how I trust and put my faith in God for promises to prophetic words that are yet to come to pass. So stay tuned. So I know from the title that some of you might be wondering, what exactly is a kingdom marriage? Well, a kingdom marriage is one that is led by the Holy Spirit. If you've been on YouTube and are keen on prophetic words, you might have noticed the outpouring of many, many prophecies on kingdom marriages for this season. Well, I received a word and I'm here to share that journey or experience with you. Before we go any further, I'd like us to get a deeper understanding on what faith is. And Hebrews chapter 11 gives us clear meaning and definition on what God describes faith to be. I'll be using the Passion Translation from verse 1 to 7. So verse 1, Now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. So from verse 1, my faith is in God, while my hope is kingdom marriage. Verse 2, this testimony of faith is what previous generations were commended for. Faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. And this just goes to show the power of words. We are co-creators with Christ and even in his word we are told that there is power of life and death in our tongue. So really guys, be mindful of what you speak over yourself and what you speak over others. Verse 4. Faith moved Abel to choose more acceptable to choose a more acceptable sacrifice to offer God than his brother Cain, and God declared him righteous because of his offering of faith. By his faith, Abel speaks instructions to us today, even though he is long dead. So Abel choosing like a more acceptable sacrifice just goes to show how he honored God, how he revered him, and that's what he's speaking to us, that we should have reverence, stroke holy fear for our father. Verse 5. Faith lifted Enoch from this life, and he was taken up into heaven. He never had to experience death. He just disappeared from this world because God promoted him. For before he was translated to the heavenly realm, his life had become a pleasure to God. Who doesn't want to be a true friend to God like Enoch was? You know, Enoch doesn't have a book or a long story in the Bible. He's like, you know, Jabez, who we have a prayer for. And I think we should also like have a, the prayer of Enoch to be true friends of God, that God loves us and is pleased by us so much that he just wants to spend time with us in heaven. He takes us away from this falling world and takes us up to his heavenly heights. So Enoch was, is, is my role model. And without faith, verse 6, living within us, it will be impossible to please God. For we come to God in faith, knowing that he is real and that he rewards the faith of those who give all their passion and strength into seeking him. So here we see that all that pleases God is faith, not our works, not our false righteousness, because we know and believe that our righteousness is in Christ. So what pleases God is our faith in him. Verse 7. Faith opened Noah's heart to receive revelation and warnings from God about what was coming, even things that had never been seen. But he stepped out in reverent obedience to God and built an ark that would save him and his family. By his faith, the world was condemned, but Noah received God's gift of righteousness that comes by believing. As we see from, or in, as we are encouraged by Noah's account of faith, we see that God might call us to do things that seem out of the ordinary or crazy to some people. Like for Noah, um, he was told to build an ark because God was going to flood the earth. And at that time, rain was, rain was not invented, <laughs> if you may say so. The plants used, used to be watered from the waters below, from the springs that come forth from the earth. 
so water or rain was just something that seemed you know unimaginable the people might have ridiculed him the people might have called him crazy but he still stepped out in faith and this is the type of faith that god requires from us or god is wants from us <sighs> i'm so tired So like I mentioned earlier, my faith is really on God. That means not on man, not on myself, my own strength, or not on the probability of what I'm hoping for coming to pass. And just to prove how much this is a stretch for me and what people would be like, why are you even trusting for a husband, a kingdom spouse right now in your young 24 years or old 24 years? We are the men, first of all. But anyway, <laughs> just to prove how much this is a stretch for me is that First of all, um, I have, currently, I have no boyfriend. So where is this husband coming from? Second of, second of all, I've never been in a long-term romantic relationship. But <laughs> no one is currently checking on me. So I don't know where this man is coming from. He better be sent from heaven. I wanna be the one who you believe in your heart is sent from. And you know, James chapter 2 talks about how faith without works is dead. And this past few months, God has been, leaving, has been leading me to, you know, move out in faith through seeking Him, through prayer, and through fasting, believing that what He has said, He has already done. So the vlog is just basically the last three days of this 21 marriage day stroke daniel day fast so marriage my mar kingdom marriage stroke daniel fast so i hope um you will be encouraged to you know um try or do a fast to seek god and not just for a promise just to seek god and know him and yeah that's basically it <laughs> Day 1 stroke day 19 of the fast. So a typical day for me starts with me having my morning devotion, just seeking God through his word. Then I pray, then I look at my planner. That's if I've even written anything because it's something I'm trying to introduce into my morning and night routine. After checking my planner, I journal. So I've been using a prompt by Worthy Healing Academy called 60 Days of Me that has just been mind-blowing. Um, After this, I have my breakfast, then I decided to read the book before the retreat. The book was basically talking about how to take care of our physical bodies in light of it being the temple of God. Of course, it's scriptural backing. So I've never done a Daniel fast and I've never been vegan. So doing a 21 day Daniel fast was interesting to say the least. I discovered new recipes. I had to meal plan and meal prep, which I guess was skills that I needed. So if anyone, oh wait, so a Daniel fast is basically a vegan fast, but a bit more intense because you don't take sugar and the only flour that's permitted is whole flours. So if anyone needs like tips on foods to try out during their Daniel fast, um, please comment down below. And for even like for me to like kind of talk about my whole Daniel fast experience, please comment down below. So I currently don't have a vlogging camera or a tripod. So filming while cooking was a task. So sorry if the video quality is a bit shaky. But anyway, I basically made some fried brown rice and um, French bean stroke, green bean curry and wholemeal pasta.
and you are going to meditate on them in the morning and you are going to meditate on them at night. And day two stroke day 20 was my Sabbath rest day. So I spent most of it <laughs> just lazing around in my bed, honestly. I watched my online church service, had some worship, or I think I did. I was mainly moody that day, and I that was just because of my PMSing. But I was also exhausted. I was up for close to 24 hours the previous day because the Supernatural Body Retreat started at 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. Kenyan time. So I was out. But yeah, it, um, joining the the second day was also really, really nice. It's the final day. I'm super excited, yet a bit sad. I don't know about you, but I normally like feel close, so close to God during the last few days of my fast that you don't even feel like breaking the fast. But anyway, the day started with me having my normal routine, which was basically devotion, prayer, um, journaling, cleaning my room, and... Um, I regularly change up my sheets, so that's what I was doing right there. Yeah, <laughs> so I made my bed. I just realized that I talked a lot about the retreat without really giving out much detail. So the host of the retreat was Miss, is Miss Shana Nivette, and I'll leave her, the link to her YouTube page and also her website. She is worth your time. So day three was basically me just seeking God through his word, worshipping him, praying ETC. And it was a nice end of a fast. I felt really intimate with God and it was beautiful. So I really, really love this 60 days of me journaling prompt i don't know if i've mentioned this but check shannon yvette's youtube channel she's just been a blessing to me during this covid season and i hope she'll bless you too and also the products she has on her website are just phenomenal so i say all this and i do all this to encourage you to move boldly in your faith in christ in james chapter 2 verse 25 to 26 it says it was the same with the prostitute rehab she was put right with God through her actions by welcoming the Israelite spies and helping them to escape by a different route. I don't know, maybe you might feel like um, you have a lowly position and God will not use you. Or maybe you even think that the action that God is telling you to move out on is something that's insignificant. But as you can see with, the, with Rahab, that she just welcomed the spies and helped them escape. And it was counted as righteousness towards her. In Joshua, it talks about how when the walls of Jericho came tumbling down and the Israelites invaded the, the city of Jericho, they killed each and every living thing except for Rahab and her household or those who were, who were in her house that day. And it says that Rahab li lived with the Israelites until this day. And what that even shows is that God will be faithful to you when you move out in faith. So... She got to experience the promised land that was promised to the Israelites by God just because of her one action of faith that might have seemed insignificant to others. So I'd encourage you to just go before God and ask him, what, how, would, how can I move in faith today? Be blessed. Bye.